my last session, I have talked about the trust and uh, how the uh, build, uh, build the trust among the others. Now, in continuation of that, I would like to share with you that is the how different parameters uh, uh, that can architect uh, the trust uh, amongst the individuals. The first is the authenticity that is the finding your voice. Now, you see that is the whenever we are talking about uh, this particular type of uh, uh, the uh, trust building exercise, then definitely what we want to say we should have the full authenticity and it means that there is yes we have the enough knowledge about that particular uh, uh, activity that particular event, that particular skill and therefore, I can do that and th that will be the authenticity in building the trust. Second important aspect is emotional intelligence, turning into your own emotions and those of others. Now, first I would like to talk about the turning the uh, our emotions of ourselves. For this purpose, there are the five dimensions which are very, very important. There is self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy and social skills are the socialization. So, first I will talk about that is the self-awareness. When whether we can do this particular task or not for that purpose, our self-awareness is very, very important. Then only we will be able to build that trust. To know that self-awareness, what we should know? The first and foremost is to know your strengths, whether do I have the strengths for doing that particular task or not. Second is knowing the weaknesses. In self-awareness, we should know what are my weaknesses, because the trust is the delivering of task. If I know that is this is my weakness and I cannot deliver this particular task, then in that case we have to avoid the particular uh, in the, uh, to take that responsibility and we should say that no, it will, would not be possible for me to deliver this particular task. But if you have the strength, because in self-awareness you know about your strengths also. So, if you know your strengths, then definitely you can go for that particular uh, self-awareness uh, and for a particular task. Second is self-regulation in emotional intelligence. Whenever we talk about the self-regulation, in the self-regulation it is the whether I am able to control myself or not. And if I am able to regulate myself, I am able to monitor myself, then definitely I will have the higher emotional intelligences there. Third factor that is about the motivation, willingness to do or not. So, in any case if we want to deliver a particular task, we should have the willingness for that the high motivation. If high motivation is there, we will be able to deliver. But if there is a low motivation and we know that they, we are not having the very high motivation for this, then we should not take that a task for the uh, completion or accomplishments. Then empathy concern for others. So, in that case if we are having the empathy or concern for others, it becomes very, very important that is the uh, we take that particular task, deliver the task and develop the trust. And last is socialization. As I mentioned earlier in my discussion in trust building, that is the communication plays a very, very important role. In socialization process, normally what we do, we involve people, we include people, we share with people our experiences, our uh, problems, uh, our worries and therefore, that way in the socialization process, we are very, very strong and if they, uh, we are strong in socialization process, self-awareness, self-regulation motivation and empathy, it means that our emotional intelligence is very is reasonable and then we can develop the trust. Because in the architect of the trust, it is very necessary that is you are having the strong emotional intelligence. Next factor in the architect of trust is the climate building, creating an environment where people can bring 
forth their ideas, values and concerns. So, therefore, in the trust climate building, it is becoming very, very important that is the we allow people to share their ideas simultaneously, we also share our ideas there in that particular platform. In that platform, whenever the ideas, values and concern are shared, then they, uh, we will find that is the it, it, it is a strong platform for the creation of trust. Next very interesting dimension is walking the talk. In walking the talk, actions speak louder than words, espouse values versus the values in action. So, therefore, whenever we, we uh, say that is yes, I will do this, right? that is good, but the better is that is the we, we do it efficiently. So, therefore, in not only that we talk about the our activities, but we also deliver our activities, we accomplish our activities in a given time. If you want to know that what are my the trust patterns are there, then it will be you can find out by the, the people, groups and institutions that I connect with. If I am connected with the uh, people, those who are having uh, a very good impression, I am having the connect with the groups, those who are very well recognized and institutions, those who are highly reported. If I am associated with this type of the uh, um, bodies, then definitely in that case, it will be observed that is the there is a high trust pattern is there. Do I trust, not trust them? So, therefore, in that case, the question arises whether uh, do I trust or I do not trust. As I mentioned, that is there will be the feelings to trust. If there are the feelings to trust, then definitely person will trust. If there is no feeling to trust, then definitely uh, and you are going by the facts, then it is not the question of the trust, rather than it is, it is, it is the question of whether to trust or not to trust. Why do I trust and not trust them? It is becoming always you have to ask yourself that is the whether what are the reasons, what are the parameters on which I am uh, uh, trusting the another person or I do not trust the another person. So, we should be very clear in our parameters. What beliefs as a measure are facts am I uh, basing this on and then you have to also test your own parameters because those parameters may not be having the clear cut ideas to deliver that particular task. Now, in continuation, uh, the question arises, what you know, who should I trust? Interest, does this person share my goals, values and beliefs? Then definitely uh, we will go by the uh, who should I trust? Uh, competence is there, does this person have the required knowledge and ability? And uh, if the person is having the required knowledge and ability, it means that he is a competent person is there. Accountability. Will, will this person honor commitments and therefore, he has that uh, feeling of the accountability for that particular uh, task, then definitely we can trust for this. Reliability, will this person tell me what I need to know and therefore, in that case whether the person is reliable or not and then in that case also we can check and then find out whether the person is a trustworthy or not. Next is the attitude, does this person want me to succeed? Now, what is the uh, positive attitude of that particular person? If it is a positive attitude is there, then definitely in that case, he will support and wish you, uh, wish you to get the success. So, therefore, to whom you should trust? You should trust the person who is having the common interest, high competence, high accountability, significant reliability and positive attitude. If this type of the characteristics are there, then definitely you can trust that particular person. Now, I would like to share with you the trust uh, equ uh, building equation. First is the intention preparation mechanics. In inter uh, intention preparation mechanics, it becomes the communication. Communication is very, very important. If proper communication is there and there is a flow of communication, definitely you will find that is you are able to build the trust. Uh, if you talk about the outcomes are there, so in that trust building equation, then naturally there are the results are there which, which uh, prove 
uh, that they, they, these results are out of the trust building exercises. Third is authenticity and that is a self knowledge is there and the person he, uh, he himself is having that competence and uh, skill and knowledge level that high that it will giving you the trust building equation. So, therefore, in that case in trust building equation you must have observed that there are the intentions and preparations and mechanics in the communication as a result of which you will find there is an authenticity and authenticity is giving the results that is the outcome is there. Now, who are the trust builders? Trust builders are those persons who understand the climate that is in the given climate whether one should do the job or one should not do the jobs. Second is understand the level of resilience that is a future shock. The person who trusts another person keeps in mind that is if I fail in trusting others then what will be the repercussions, what will be the outcome and then he understand the level of resilience is there. Are you stepping on values, norms and traditions then therefore, it, it depends on that is the whatever trust is built is it supported by the values, uh, is this supported by the norms and is this supported by the common traditions which are to be followed in an organization and if it is so then you have to build the trust. Practice the very best communication frequently. So, therefore, in that case it becomes very very important that is the whether we are having the best communication practice or not. If there is a best communication practices frequently naturally the person will understand each other and there will be uh, no misunderstanding because by communication you clarify any misunderstanding. Resistance is normal and healthy that is to listen. So, whatever you say the another person he listens you and if this is so then definitely in that case you can find that is you can build the trust. Do not ignore the signs it would not go away while in, be in between the interaction between the two persons or with the people or with the group or with the institution. If you get the signs the signals that the things are not moving as per your uh, uh, expectation then uh, you should not uh, uh, ignore that rather than you should give the attention and try to identify whether you are having the trust in the right body or not. In trust building actions as I mentioned communication plays a very very important is there. Normally whenever there is a problem the best way is to solve the problem through direct communication and therefore, you have to be very explicit if compromise is productive do it in communication nor in your mind alone. So, many times we, we are making certain assumptions and thought process in our mind which is not correct what is required is that is we are able to express our thoughts. If you are not explicit it will create more problems. So, it becomes very very important that is we are making the proper communication. Second point is ask non assumptive questions inquiry not advocacy it is very very interesting point is there that is the many times the people they when they uh, interact with you and they ask. So, it, it, it is not the advocacy rather than it is the information it is a communication and therefore, in that case one should go for the uh, for the uh, advocacy and, in, and uh, only in the case when you do not have the trust in that case and non assumptive questions are there. So, please be careful in this and therefore, one should can have the inquiry and not the advocacy. Practice deep listening suspend judgment and therefore, it is better that is you have the deep listening look for the positive acknowledge the intent first. Now, you can find out that is the you are having their positive and uh, uh, very very uh, acknowledgement uh, in whenever any 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 commitment has been fulfilled. So, therefore, if there you are looking for a very positive response is there 
then acknowledge that particular response and then say that is yes uh, this type of the support was expected you have provided the support and naturally a, as a result in you will find that is the more trust has been developed between the parties. Validate success a new effort share credit generously yeah, it is very very important to build a team and build a trust among the group members that is the whatever the success and new effort is there then please share that credit to all the team members and not only to the leader if you are a leader you do not have the only you one should, should not have the credit rather than you one should share his credit to the group members. But for doing this there are the number of barriers what are those barriers first is the distance barrier distance barrier is uh, very simple examples are telephone and therefore in that case there is no proper communication email email is not properly written fax so uh, this type of the if you are using the instruments then they lack the high touch the psychological uh, separation and therefore it becomes very very ineffective physical barriers the physical barriers are the structure of the meeting place and therefore in that case you will find that is the where you are conducting this type of the meeting in the communication process if the meeting are uh, there is the full of the noise and there may be the no proper communication and that may create the trust barriers language barriers language used may not be the first language of both the parties and if it is so then definitely it will take time to build the trust because it will take time to understand from each other culture barriers trust may mean different things and be built in different ways and therefore in this case for example is given here in north america demonstrated performance over time china latin america arab countries relationships social interactions over time and then then only the trust will be built. So, therefore, if you see that is a culture wise it becomes very very different because in North America as we have seen that is the with the performance is important over the period of time while in the other, other countries uh, you will find that is a relationship is given the more importance as compared to the only the performance. So, common organizational trust based practices are that is the effectiveness and productivity. So, if you are having the good trust then definitely you will be effective in your managership and also you will have the high productivity. There will be the improvement and change positively. So, if you are having the high level of trust you will have the more uh, more uh, 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 the effective results and uh, then we will have the uh, improvement uh, in, in your performance. If there are the cultural and moral both, both the practices are matching and as a result of which in the social cultural aspects you will find there is a strong support and if there is a strong support there will be the improvement uh, in your performance. Employee retention and turnover if there is a high trust in the organization then there will be high employee retention and less employees turnover will be there. So, the, this uh, but if there is a less trust then definitely the high turnover and, and low employee retention will be there. Uh, here I would like to share a quote which uh, talks about uh, the importance of trust within organizations. Although an organization obviously cannot succeed without high levels of trust between members most aggressive companies do little to actively build trust. The typical corporation spends huge sums of money training its managers in interpersonal skills, but pays leap service to the critical issues of trust and therefore, the importance is to be given to the trust and more and more training programs can be developed in the how to build the trust amongst the uh, employees. The, uh, this statement was given by the Marshall Senior uh, Senator Organizational Dynamics in the 2001. Now, for an organization there will be the challenges in maintaining an environment of trust for first and foremost is as society and institutions become more complex the attribution of blame and responsibility for failures become diffuse and in current uh, 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 scenario you will find that is this type of statements I see you I blame you so I do not trust you this type of these statements uh, at the workplace is becoming common. 
so therefore uh, it, it, it is an it, it is an uh, uh, emphasis is that is the how there more uh, emphasis is to be given in the attribution uh, of the taking the responsibility and not on the blame to the others complex organizations make it hard to deliver consistent service and conduct. So, the complex organizations are those organizations where the organization structures and the jobs and responsibilities are for more than the one person and therefore, in that case there is a cross communication and if there is a cross communication that organization structure becomes the complex organization structure. If there is a complex organization structure, it becomes very hard to deliver consistent service because the one boss says one thing, there is no scalar chain of command and therefore, uh, it, 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 is the, it is crossing the order of the one boss by the another boss. Therefore, as a result of which there is not a match between the conduct and the order. And if there is a mismatch between the conduct and the order, then the, the task will not be completed within the time. There is a need for the quick trust being in a hurry to complete the process, pace workloads is there. So, many times it is like that is a team is formed in a very short time and therefore, uh, they have been forced to trust each other and uh, because of the shortage of time, uh, they, that is called the quick trust. There is enough in enough time is not given to develop or build a trust rather than uh, in a short project uh, it is a team is formed and it is expected that their team will have the trust from the for the each other trust in government is a scarce resource many times the people those who are uh, uh, afraid of that is whether the government will support this type of activities or not and as a result of which there is no trust for the government so last slide which I would like to discuss on this particular uh, uh, trust building exercises is the advantages of high trust organizations. That is why we should develop the high trust organization. The first and foremost is experience half the average turnover of industry peers. More trust is there, better is the work environment. Better is the work environment, more retention of the employees and less turnover will be there. If there is a proper trust there will be proper coordination which is a managerial function. A proper coordination is there, there will be higher productivity and profitability will be there. If there is a high productivity and profitability uh, definitely that will be lead to bring the high level of the customer satisfaction and loyalty and this can be done through help of more qualified candidates for the open positions they will like to join your organization because you are showing the trust in your employees. More adaptive organizational structures will be there, the more flexibility will be there, then constructive and strategic alliances that will be developed. So, when you develop that constructive and strategic alliances amongst the members, uh, uh, definitely uh, you will be able to perform in a better way, your organization will be a leading organizations. They will be the responsive virtual teams, uh, uh, because you have made the different teams and all teams are uh, uh, having the enough time to interact and communicate, understanding the roles and responsibilities, they do not blame each other, then definitely it will be becoming the responsive virtual team will be there. If the problem comes in the organization and there is a crisis management, immediately because the people are having the trust amongst themselves, employees will uh, are showing the high authenticity, they are having the high ownership in the organization and as a result of which they will have the, the you know, proper effective crisis management. And finally, reduce transaction and, uh, and litigation cost because there will be less conflicts, there will be more understanding, better trust, so that there will be no complaints and as a result of which you will find that is the litigation will be less and less. Litigations are there where the employee does not believe that employee will able to provide me the, the justice and but here because it is a trust building exercise and the trust building climate is there. So, the people will be having the less litigations and that it will reduce the transactions and the litigation cost uh, and better efficiency and productivity. This is all about the advantages of high trust organizations, how to build the trust and trust building exercises. Thank you.